In the past two videos, we looked at William Regal's career from his days as a shoot wrestler in Blackpool, England, all the way up to his rocky beginnings in the WWF. We left last time in early 2006, where it appeared Regal was getting moved into a lower mid-card position on SmackDown. This is where we will begin today's video as we put a bow on William Regal's career. After the feud with Paul Burchill had ended, Regal remained in the lower end of the card. He would find himself getting more TV time though when Booker T won the King of the Ring tournament in May that year. Booker T became King Booker, a brand new character where the royalty of becoming king went to Booker's head, going as far as to change his mannerisms, how he talked during promos and how he wrestled in the ring. I thought King Booker was very entertaining, and I feel this was one of the few times a drastic character change to an already established superstar worked really well. On the May 26th episode of Smackdown in 2006, King Booker had his official coronation ceremony, and also on this date, the King's Court faction was unofficially founded, which included members Queen Charmel, Fit Finlay and William Regal. Regal's role was the group's town crier, who would yell all hail King Booker as he made his way to the ring. It was all very over the top but it was also very entertaining and it was good to see Regal have a spot on TV which was better than where he was previously in 2006. The King's Court was quite successful, with Fit Finlay capturing the United States Championship after defeating Bobby Lashley and King Booker winning the World Heavyweight Championship at the Great American Bash that year. Regal wanted some of the same success, so he challenged his stablemate Finlay for the United States Championship also at the Great American Bash, but he was unsuccessful in winning the gold. Finlay and Regal would continue to feud in the weeks that followed, making it unclear if both men were still members of the King's Court. King Booker decided he would knight William Regal and Fit Finlay, thus renaming them Sir William Regal and Sir Finlay on the August 25th episode of Smackdown, so all seemed well within the King's Court. How they done this segment though without totally cracking up is beyond me. The facial expressions from King Booker and especially William Regal were next to none, with Regal almost breaking down in tears when the honour of being knighted was bestowed upon him. It was great. At No Mercy 2006, Fit Finlay was added to a fatal four-way match for Booker T's World Championship. Seeing this as a potential problem, Booker commanded Sir Regal to make sure Fit Finlay done the right thing and assisted King Booker in defending his title. When this did not happen, Booker T called Regal pathetic and slapped him, which prompted Regal to punch him back and officially leave the King's Court. After all was said and done, King Booker still ended up winning the fatal four-way match. Two weeks later on SmackDown, William Regal was shown backstage where he delivered one of his best, more serious promos. Regal said, My name is William Regal and there was a time when I was one of the greatest wrestlers in this business and held numerous championships, but lately that has not been the case. And do you know why? Because I've been too busy dressing up like a buxom wench for some silly parrot and more recently I've been guaranteeing victories for a bogus king. A king who did knight me Sir William Regal, but all that made me was a useless non-entity of a laggy. Well, I have something to tell you people. I'm no more a servant. I'm finished being anybody's whipping boy, and I've had it up to here being the butt of everyone's jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, William Regal is no longer Smackdown's doormat. As the camera zoomed out, Dave Taylor, Regal's old partner from the Blue Bloods in WCW, was shown standing beside him. The tag team went on to look quite dominant in their first match but Taylor suffered a knee injury in the team's second outing, already putting the tag team in jeopardy. Taylor quickly healed up though and he was able to take part in the Armageddon 4-way tag team ladder match, that one with the gruesome Joey Mercury eye injury. Regal and Taylor were not successful in winning the tag titles on this night though, or subsequent nights. 
Taylor and Regal broke up when Regal was drafted to Raw in the summer of 2007. Two months after the draft, Regal was made the new general manager of Raw after winning a battle royal on the August 6th episode. One of the more memorable angles that William Regal took part in here was his involvement in the Ric Flair retirement story. Vince McMahon wanted Ric Flair gone, and every match of Flair's had a stipulation where if he lost, he had to retire. Regal initially sided with Vince McMahon as he wanted to impress his boss. Triple H faced Ric Flair on the December 31st 2007 episode of Raw. The friends were forced to wrestle each other as if Flair lost he would have to retire and if Triple H lost he was not allowed to enter the 2008 Royal Rumble. William Regal ended up hitting Flair with brass knuckles causing Triple H to get disqualified, losing the match and seemingly his Royal Rumble entry. The next week, on the first Raw of 2008, Regal explained that he thought Vince would have liked the fact that Triple H was taken out of the Royal Rumble. Vince said that he wants to see Triple H injured, and after a spin of the Raw roulette wheel, it was decided that Triple H and Regal would face each other in a first blood match. The match turned out to be quite solid, with Triple H scoring the win after delivering punches to Regal's head that eventually busted him open. The April 21st 2008 edition of Raw was a special 3 hour episode where a new King of the Ring would be crowned. William Regal won the tournament, giving CM Punk his first loss by submission in the WWE during the finals. This was quite a surprising win for Regal, who was still GM of Raw at the time. I think it's safe to say that no one thought at this point in his career that William Regal would be given the title of King of the Ring. But with this new unhinged attitude and after winning every one of his matches this night via submission, it seemed Regal was ready for a resurgence in his career. But as it turned out, Regal was suspended for 60 days in the weeks that followed after his second violation of the WWE wellness policy. This is a shame as the King William Regal stuff looked like it was going to be interesting. But when Regal returned, there was no real mention of the King of the Ring, and he also wasn't the general manager of Raw anymore. William Regal won an over-the-top battle royal to face Santino Morella for the Intercontinental Championship, a title which he ended up winning for the second time after a quick squash match. Regal would then feud with CM Punk, resulting in him losing the IC title in a no disqualification match on the January 19th, 2009 episode of Raw. Following this, Regal mainly worked in the WWE mid card. In the summer of 2009, William Regal was drafted to the ill fated ECW brand. He was pushed into the main event picture in ECW, becoming the number one contender for Christian's ECW title, but he never did win the gold after multiple matches. He formed a faction named the Ruthless Round Table with Ezekiel Jackson and Vladimir Kozlov, but with most things on WWE ECW, there's not much happening here that's noteworthy. ECW eventually got cancelled and replaced with the original incarnation of NXT, something William Regal would be involved in from season 1 as his career was now beginning to wind down. In the first season of NXT, Regal was Skip Sheffield's pro, also known as Ryback. Regal would begin working lower card feuds on other WWE shows while he was still involved in NXT. He eventually became a commentator on the Yellow brand while still getting himself involved in matches with rookies and their pros. Eventually, Regal became the commentator for FCW where he had a feud with Dean Ambrose also. Regal would continue working live events during this time and also make the odd Raw or Smackdown appearance, usually on the losing side. Regal's final wrestling match happened on the December 25th edition of NXT where he lost to Antonio Cesaro. Regal was moved away from the commentary desk in NXT and became the general manager for the brand in July 2014, an on-screen role he still has to this very day. When Dusty Rhodes passed away, Regal became a trainer at the WWE Performance Center where he helps the stars of tomorrow become better athletes. Along with these roles, William Regal works as an international talent scout, with his official job title being the WWE Director of Talent Development and head of global recruiting. And that's it really for William Regal's career. My hope is, after these last three videos, 
that some of the newer WWE fans now have a better understanding of William Regal and why he deserves to be complimented. For older fans, I hope these videos were a nice trip down memory lane. William Regal is a great example also of someone who was down and out throughout his life, both personally and professionally, but he was able to bounce back and become an asset to the company and also become a better human being. Now you're free to go off and find yourself some William Regal or Lord Stephen Regal matches to enjoy.